because design is such an intu intuitive way as well of expressing there's not a wrong way. Hello everybody, this is Mario. Welcome to another episode of uh, Design Interviews and Questions where we interview designers from all around the world. Today's guest is uh, uh, Riani Bello from London. So welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Um, so as I always remember to the interviewees, uh, you are totally free to answer whatever you want. So just feel free. What and do you then, mean? Yeah, just like no, no limits, like whatever you think you can uh, share with oh, me okay. and I mean, all the others. And okay. if you don't mind, I would start with the starting question, which is what made you become a designer? I actually was supposed to be a dentist, it should okay. be uh, totally truthful. <laughs> My family is completely made of doctors and dentists, uh, and um, yes, so I was completely like known as gonna be a dentist. I was like completely, um, yeah, I was sure about that. And but when I was 15 to 16, I went to exchange program in the United States, and there um, I had like uh, I chose lessons of art and something that is unique from the United States, which is not from Brazil, where I'm from. They had lessons, the same lessons every day, which in Brazil is not like that. We, you know, we mix things up. So I had art every single day of my life there for a year. And that I improved so many, so much. And I always did things for school, you know, but since I came from a family that did not really notice illustration or notice art, I never really went to museums with my family. That was that was not in my culture. I never really could look at my talents in a way if I had one. So was there in nine states that actually understood that I had some talent for it because in the end of the year they had like the best of the show. They you show like everything that you've done in the art class and they invite like people from outside to do a jury uh, and choose a student that had like qualified or uh, good work. And I was announced to be the student of best of the show. And for me, that was a shock. I, I was completely like totally not even aware of it. And then when I came back after that year from Brazil, something also happened that was really nice. A friend of mine for my jazz lesson, she wanted to see my work that I'd done um, and the work that won and everything. And she actually was doing graphic design. She was older. And when she saw the whole thing and she said, why don't you do graphic design? And I remember asking, what the hell is graphic design? You know, I had no idea. And this was before the ent entrance test for university, which at yeah, 16 to 17, uh, I was a bit younger than normal. And then I, she said, like, do a course before just to find out if you like it or not. And then she advised me into this course. And then the first day of the course, I knew that that was it. I was like, okay, I found myself. And then I went to the to university. And and funny enough, the the, the people who gave the, the this course, I end up doing my first uh, internship uh, for. So anyway, things actually grab at the same time. That's how I did not become a dentist. <laughs> so. But I, I think you also use uh, some of the art knowledge that you got also in graphic design, right? Yeah, I think so. I, I, I mean, I don't consider myself at all an artist, but I think every designer has a bit of the artist in them, you know, uh, because it is through art that we get inspired as well and we cannot see that boundary, I guess, of uh, of the visual world. We are extremely kind of uh, sucking and we get inspired by everything. So I do see myself as quite expressive in that way or in a way illustrative uh, that grabs a bit of uh, other forms of art and not the maybe traditional kind of say modernistic only type design in a way. I, I, I do think I'm interested in different forms of expressing, not just one or one way of doing it. So 
probably that's yeah probably that's what I translate when it comes to my work and well, what is then graphic design for you um in my case, because I do visual identity mostly, or what you can call branding, whatever. I don't. I'm not in, really into this word. Um, I think it's identify. I, what the only thing that I can do as a designer is identify something, uh, a need of a project, or identify visually. And that's what I think the core of what we do. And, and to be able to identify, we have to make it unique. To be identify means to be ident. Uh, to, to have an identity and to be to be unique uh, to be is almost like being a person. I always say in lectures that to identify is somebody needs to recognize um, something that is related to something else. So if I have a client with a need, I translate the what is invisible to be visible because it when it comes from the client, it is still an idea. It doesn't have a shape or form. And what I do is translate that into being visible, to be recognizable so people can know what they are doing. So also, I'm also at service of, a, of an idea, of a, of a client. So I'm not it, but I am this medium between uh, a need uh, that I can translate and use my, my gift, let's say, or our gifts, because we are talking in a design community here, um, to translate what their needs are and, and for people to, to connect to people, to communicate what they need to other people and make that tangible. Um, so we are, we are connectors as well, in a way, the communicators, but in a way we make it visual, visible for people to be able to connect and understand that link. And actually you already answered to the third question. So I will do another one, which is, um, in your works, I have the sensation that um, there is a kind of harmony between forms and colors and letters. I mean, it's a really strong harmony. Is something that is a, like a goal in your works or something that comes naturally? Uh, well, <laughs> I don't think I can actually, I'm not really aware precisely what I do what is good in my work is always easier for somebody else to look from outside and recognize that so first of all thank you for noticing that but i i'm not necessarily aware but i think what i what maybe comes uh what i'm or, or i can analyze it is that i've always been dyslexic um, quite dyslexic really badly uh which when I start to learn and write in school, I had to have uh, help of a teacher for seven years to help me to to interpret text. So I always, for me, I think image and text are all the same. So in a way, I I see it and I intertwine it, it all the same, which text is an image, of course. So when it comes, it, it is a communication, but it is an image, it shapes as well to make a letter, right? So I, I think in that way, that's what I, I try to do to make one image, I think, to to make it uh, symbolize or unify everything in one single uh, strong imagery and that unifies it, it all. I don't see it one thing as separate each other. And I think that's what it is, a, designer in the essence it is to make what is essence to be said and said it in a strong powerful and in one image and quite easy for people to digest even if it is complex image or not doesn't matter but it needs to have this this meaning in one um kind of a clear message or or imagery we're all combined so you you, des you design you said that you design uh, often identities. Um, is there a specific process that you are interested in when you start a new project? Or like, is every time different? I, uh, I think it's the same. It's just some a little bit differ from each other because if it is a bigger client or a smaller client, but uh, that we take some steps out. Because if it's a smaller client, you are already like 
right away with the people that makes the decisions. So you don't have to have so many layers on top. But when it's a bigger client, you have, I think, to have a little bit more strategic step on it. You have to learn a little bit more uh, more about a lot of visions from more people inside of the company to understand their needs. So first, always is understand what they are going through and understand what they want to see what the real needs are behind it. So we can bring that back to to them because most of the times the client doesn't actually know what they need. They know what they want. And sometimes it's for us to, it's our job as well to get back to them and say, look, looks like maybe that's that's what should we should do what do you think and so there is this kind of um, kind of research before naturally and then the creative process which is the same for a small or big clients i think doesn't matter i think the the difference is sometimes you regret i have to work with uh, my creative partner uh um in a bigger project or on a smaller project it's just me uh, so it depends in that way but the process of design it doesn't really change. You sit down. Every time I sit down to a new project, I feel I don't know anything. <laughs> and then I go through the up and down of thinking that I'm the one day I had an amazing idea. The next day I think it's crap and then it goes up and down like this until I actually have time to analyze and deconstruct the whole idea to actually be a little bit more comfortable to understand what's the right idea and the right path and the right sketch and the right shape for that problem and that client that makes sense for that client. And then I can go through and, and pick it up and, and continue. But I think, and then there's phases, of course, of uh, presentation, development, and deliverables. And I think that we are all the same in that way. Before we started to um, do the interview, we, we talked about uh, Wolfgang Weingart. And uh, I mean, we were we were talking that we 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 are amazed by his works his masterpiece and somehow for me every time i i look at them like i i say like it's kind of perfect i i would not change anything it's it's crazy do, do you think in design perfection can exist or or is just something that we cannot say and yeah I think it all is depends on relationship to what the perfection is relationship to something, you know, it's I, I think perfection in itself cannot exist because we ourselves are not perfect unless you are an angel. And I don't know. I'm sorry, <laughs> Mario, but I haven't met an angel yet. So, uh, but uh, yeah, I don't think in the perfect sense, I think perfection it's. It, it's not there, but depends on what the needs are and the clients are. For example, Vanguard, it was perfect for what he wanted to do and for the time he was doing it. And, and it's still amazing to today. And of course, he's a master and it's perfect for that, for the intentions he had. And I think we can have a perfect solution for that client at that time at that needs, at that time of their, the company time as well, because five years later that we see that normally change all the time, you know, it's like suddenly a, a different strat, uh, a different strategy for the company and they need a, a new design. And normally it's not the same designers who did the designs before. So like, like we go through the same, the, the same things, which was perfect for that year, five years later, is not perfect anymore. So uh, it's the same with a person. No, you date a person and it's perfect. The, the person is perfect for me, but it's not perfect for you. You know. So I think it's like a, in relationship to what. And I think we we are designers. We are so quick to judge. You know, in that way because we don't know exactly the conversation we had with clients and um, not necessarily the conversation. Of course, needs to be beautiful or strong and good in design eyes anyway it doesn't matter does it matter which process you've been through with with your client it needs to be good design but at the same time you you don't know the, the 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 phase that the company is to make sure to make that certain uh, solution or certain um, um, choices that you you go through and you can only know that what is best for that client at that time so some things can be quite perfect for 
for a while, but not necessarily the perfection <laughs> of uh, the sense that um, you should aim for it because it's not true and you should not do that because I don't know. I I never I never I could never even think about that. Like, I want to make a perfect design. What is that? You know can be even quite boring a perfect person who who can handle a perfect person you know you're gonna be bored with them I'm gonna have anger with them like they have no mistakes like they can they are just too perfect you know I don't want to be friends with a perfect person <laughs> probably not with the design as well because I think design what makes something identifiable is that is that weirdness as well into the design it's something unique something that is that's identifiable and to to have something identifiable you need there's something new to it or so something fresh or refreshing to that idea and, and then make something that you want to look again and uh, and that it, you want to know it and uh, i don't think the perfect balance of everything can grab you that attention and want you to actually know again and visit again and see it and appreciate it so yeah you mentioned um, that today, I mean, uh, designers are very quick to judge often, very often. Um, today, I mean, I, I think we are quite used to that because with uh, social media like Instagram, you know, you just tap and you like or you do not like. Um, do, do, do you think, is it good for uh, in contemporary, I mean, do you see contemporary design like uh, involved in this kind of way to think on things like we are too fast to judge something no i'm not i don't i don't see this in relationship to contemporary design i just see as human beings uh that's all we judge that's normal i mean it's not uh, i'm not criticizing I'm just saying we as a human beings, you know, I, I judge as well, I criticize as well, I look at things, but it's just observation of, uh, of especially that we are in a profession that is about seeing and uh, we cannot hide it, you know, it's like uh, it's, uh, it's right in your face. So it's impossible for you not to, yeah, or to th- to think or assume something that you don't know and because it's right there and that normally happens a lot with the process of uh, of uh, the client because in the strategy phase things are still in their mind if you if i say let's all think about a tree you have a completely different tree than i have in my head but once actually i pick a tree and put in a design and then everybody actually can actually criticize and no i was not thinking about this tree you know so that's when when things becomes tangible and real, and that's what we do. We make things really real and tangible, and then where people can actually reflect upon. And I think, yeah, digital uh, social media, it's, uh, I think it's, uh, it's fantastic at the same time and can be a burden because we have to learn how to use that. Uh, that becomes uh, attainable for us in our daily lives, that, that we don't become slaves of it, but we use it in our advantage and we know when to distance and when to not uh, think you yourself like oh my god I don't I make a post once in every six months you know somebody's like every day but that's not the point what what we have to really think what's your we have to, in, in new technologies like this which happens all the time you always have to confront ourselves okay what what is my role or what what can I use this for me in the best way that will translate my skills and and not slave me to it, you know. And so there's two sides of the internet, but the beautiful side of social media is that become de- democratized. I think uh, you know my work probably because of that, you know. Um, uh, you can know anybody's work from a guy that just left university, which before. You had to buy books and I used I come from the time that you had a guy come from the studios with a bunch of books uh, because they were all really expensive and, and uh, international and so uh, like so it was hard to uh, to get to understand what was happening around the world and now it's like too much <laughs> even you know, sometimes ruined uh, my will to 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 see design and I'm like oh I have no patience anymore sometimes and uh, because it's overwhelming so we have to deal with it uh, as a personal level as well and how to 
how to navigate through this new new world where has so much happening and so much communication. And we were talking about the fake news as well before we talked. It's like how to also distinguish between what is there for you and what is uh, is good for you and you can actually understand and what is like, no, this 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 is not for me and, and be able to live with it and not necessarily need to see everything and know everything, you know, because it's impossible. Mm-hmm. And do you think today uh, a studio should use like social media and these kind of tools or they also cannot be into this? Uh, I've... Who, who am I to say what they should and should not do? I, I, I think if you have your clients and you don't need to show yourself off in that way and you, there's no need, why you, you, you don't need? You know, it's like uh, I think it's just one more tool for you to be seen and to show your work and and then share what you do. But uh, there is a few studios out there that are super successful and they have their own lives and they do their own things and they don't need to be really present in social media all the time because we know that this is feeding a different part of the the uh, the community, of design community mostly. Um, so the design and the client world sometimes doesn't even get to to be in that uh, spiral that we are in. Um, so, uh, yeah, I believe I, I cannot have necessarily that luxury of really detaching because I haven't built my uh, clientele in that way. And and I use that in, in different ways, of course, and especially to be seen, and uh, which is important for everybody to... Yeah, to keep yourself uh, also in your toes, and uh, you know, and, and it's good. It's good for your ego. It's good for a lot of things in that way, you know. And but you have to just to not lose yourself in it. So I, I admire a lot uh, studios that uh, can doesn't need to have that presence all the time because it is a time consuming greatly. Well, I don't. I, I don't have that much content to put all the time, but I can imagine uh, it's something also that I'm not a millennium, so I don't take these things easily, you know? I don't find it uh, this uh, excess of... Uh, I, I don't, don't come naturally to me, and then I think that's a, a generation thing as well, that it's easier to show and everything that you do and post. It, it's a mentality that uh, I think also that comes along within... The digital world, which I grew up not yet in the digital world. You know, I went my university. I was still doing things by hand, uh, and uh, I graduated on the year 2000, which was the big year that we thought everything was going to be like flying cars in the sky. And I learned everything. I learned everything about the internet. I was like a tech savvy. I, my final exam was everything digital. I coded, I knew how to code, I knew how to do HTML by hand and JavaScript. I was, I did a CD-ROM, I, I did everything digital, you know, because I thought I could only live as a designer. And my teachers told us that. You can only be a designer if you knew these things, technology. And when it came the year 2000, nothing happened. There was no flying fucking cars in the sky, you know. I was like, wow, I'm not going to be slave to it. You know, that that's the thing. The tools comes in news all the time. But you have to see, okay, can I can I be that person or do I have to be slave to it? You know, so I decided right early on and I, I understood this relationship between uh, the profession of design, which is so doesn't really change really uh, in the core of it. You know, it's still the same shapes, tri- triangles, circles, and rectangles. We mesh it up all the time in different ways and we bring things out to life. The concept of thinking and ideas are the same, but of course the tools change and then uh, you use it for your needs. But um, And that's what I learned. And then I went back to graphic design. Uh, but I do work with people that does uh, other things, you know, it cannot be everything. It's impossible to do everything. Yeah. I mean, I was just wondering because, uh, for example, with Mitch Paoni of the Studio, um, we discussed a bit about uh, uh, this thing that today somehow it's crazy to think uh, to spend one day just to photograph uh, a business card instead like 
two or three years ago, it was kind of normal. So also like the way the studio communicates with the audience is different and probably social media today are more instant and people don't need any more like to, to make a great mock-up, you know, something like that, but just an animation, for example. Yeah, it's true. Um, you, you, you run uh, different workshops and you also give lectures. Um, so you, you are always in touch with like younger generation and students. And what, 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 what do you think regarding the, like the design education, especially thinking when you were studying, is there a huge gap or more or less things are always the same? Um, no, it's a huge gap. I, I think um, if we think about tools, uh, going to University of Design to learn these new technologicals or new tools that we, I think that's not the way to go because I remember I was already working um, in a web uh, design and I knew everything already by doing and by practicing. And the school was still teaching basics of HTML. I, I, I ignored it. I did not go to the class, uh, for example. So I think education now, because we have the digital world made us available so many things, we can learn so many things. But what the thing that we can, technology or the future will never, I think, change is the interaction between a mentor and a mentee or a group of people that learns together. And I think this is extremely important still in the education of design because exchanging, because we, we I can sit down and have a tutorial to learn something, but by myself, um, you have to have incentive because you're human beings, you know, you have to have that push, you have to have that exchange or that questioning that even if you go to forums, you feel still alone, you feel still like, let's, talk you know let's have a just a normal thing that things go faster you're gonna get uh, inspired by someone and i think that's i think the core of design education is to have somebody that 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 ran that mile you know you know it's like almost a marathon somebody that already done a marathon and people that are still stretching to learn how to do a marathon and picking up their first kilometers, you know, and then and, and getting tired and tired. And, you know, and, and that exchange, I think, to understand, look, don't worry, this is normal. Go, just go, just go and, and keep that that uh, understanding and reflection between the designers and the student. I think it's fantastic because every generation brings completely different um, ways of seeing. And that's what's beautiful as well, because you learn as much as you give, you know, and you give. You only can learn as much as you give, you know. So if you are there really interested in and in, and in, and understanding your role as just being somebody to reflect, you're not necessarily I don't think necessarily we can teach design. Uh we can reflect upon then what the choices and of course say no the, the balance is bad, the colors doesn't work, you know, you of but it's about reflecting upon something that they are doing. You're not necessarily can teach manually because design is such an intu intuitive way as well of expressing there's not a wrong way, you know, but there is a way of thinking and, and translating that's super unique for each person. So that, uh, to extract that from each student, I think you have to have somebody that been through that past and say, go, extract that, don't be afraid, you know, and I think that's what education is especially also in the social media because now we are so I've, I've seen so many students super anxious extremely anxious because they have to put so much out there they think it's it, it's so much already out there that they don't see themselves as part of this because there's so much good things that you see every day all the time and so in that sense uh that uh, kind of uh understanding adjustment also of generation, how to handle with the profession. That's something that not only them, but also me, because we also have to adapt and uh, we have to exchange, understand and, and get the support also from each other to navigate through all these changes that's going to keep changing. You know? It's not going to stop here. You know, 
So that's my that's my reflection for now. I don't know what you think. Yeah, well, I think it's interesting. I mean, this point of view, and I also think it's really interesting that uh, yeah, everything is still changing and it will change also in the future. And do you do where do you see the role of the designer in the society in the future? Because like the designer, in my opinion, is like changing a bit is becoming more independent you know and not a less dependent from like clients because today uh, sometimes the, the designer also generate and create the content so do you think is going in this direction i think it's going to be always both and i always happen that i i, I self-initiated a series of books for children books uh, about diseases and, and and this came from my relationship to my past and and of doctors living through with doctors and coming from a perspective of the designer and what can I do with it and uh, and that will always happen and always been happening I don't I don't see that this increases why increases maybe in your perception is because now the tools for you to be able to self publish it's much easier, you know, you don't need to wait for a big publisher to like your project. You just can say, fuck it, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to invest the minimum. That's it. And that's probably and that's what I did. I don't need to wait for uh, a God in the world to say that your project is good. You know, if you are happy and satisfied, you can bet on it, which before was much harder. And that's why I love the technology and how things are evolving that way, because it's democratizing design and, and, and democratizing everything in a way that makes it much more easier, but also too much faster and it's harder for you to also to grasp. So anyway, but uh, I, I do believe this is this is the both should be always will be both ways and, and should should be that way uh, in a way, because we are always at service of something. If it is at service of your own ideas of ideas of somebody else that I need, you know, I think that's the the whole point where in between your ideas can be your own or somebody else or a client that he needs. And the point is that you do the job, you do that that connector or the communication between something. And it doesn't matter where it comes from. <laughs> um, uh, today we, we, we are facing this global pandemic uh, which is affecting all, all, all the world, actually. And a lot of things are going on and people are trying in some way to help. But do you think uh, the, the role of the graphic designer can help in this moment or not? I think directly, no. But indirectly, yes. I yeah, think, of uh... course, not medically, but... Yeah, yeah directly, you no, know, we cannot really do much. It's not our role, you know, it's like, uh, but indirectly, yes, I think what you're doing, in a way, taking that time and getting, putting out content out there and making content out there that probably will uh, clarify and help maybe students or other people to know not only our work, but to discuss the subjects of design and make them reflect. I think it's, it's, uh, not necessarily doing something for the disease, but you're doing something with the time that we have in this time that we're going now because of the disease, understand, because of what is going on out there. So that's for me, it is doing your job. And uh, I still uh, think uh, I do a lot of things for social pro bono work and for causes that are um, for the minority, for example, and I have a client that's been asking me a lot communication at the time because they are still going on with their community kitchen, for example, and they still have to communicate uh, to the people because they are isolated. So how they do that? She needs she needs a designer still. So we are doing still uh, in connector again. We are that mediator of somebody else, but we are not the main um, the main characters. But we are the protagonist of the characters and we are the best friend of the characters. You know, you always have a best friend where they have to have a dialogue. I always think about us like that. You know, you have to have that scene that the, the because the protagonist cannot tell about their thoughts without 
without having somebody there to reflect. And I think that's where we are. We are there to bounce and we're there to, to make that thoughts uh, being, 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 uh, being real, realized. And in that way, I think, yeah, I, I see a lot of platforms right now, a lot of courses being made, uh, not only this interview, but you see the, the kind of a live talks from uh, Gianluca that I participated as well. It's been fun because when we take out the basics of life, which is health, money, which now is, is a scarcity in the world. When you take this out, you understand that there are also other things that are essential in life, which people normally neglect, which we don't because we are in the cultural side. But now what makes us actually go through life now and, and, and not be insane is music. You know, going back to listen to the birds and nature, looking back to talking to people and connecting to our friends. And and that's essence as well and design and art. And I'm, I'm doing uh, again, I have time to do my stickers uh, 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 thing that I do for my own fun and for my own health in a way, you know, and, and art is there to express and, and to keep us alive in a completely different way, in a completely different manner. And I think design in this way help in that in that surrounding, but it's not the core and the cern of the matter. And I live I live next to the people that actually uh, we're always talking about the essence and the core of matter. And I knew always uh, my role and my place that is not, um, is not design matters. Yeah, it does matter. But we just need to understand when uh, we, we can be that uh, we can we can have a role and the right in the right place without putting ourselves in the center of attention. And because almost like a narcissistic way that we think that we are too good Oh, but yeah, we are in everything, you know, but uh, surrounding everything. And I think design is in everywhere. Design is in everywhere, in everything. So in our operation room, if you did not have a product designer that made a fantastic tool for that surgeon to make a perfect surgery, but you still need that perfect surgeon, you know. So we are in need of a need, and we, we have to do our best job so somebody else can do their best job. So that friend that has this community kitchen, she, for her to be able to do her job, she still needs my help to be able to communicate uh, the people that, the elderly that she's, need, she's in need. And, and yes, I don't think myself as really important, but it's important for her at that time, yes. But I'm surrounding it. Um, and I'm help, I'm super happy that I can help in a way, you know, that I'm part of something without necessarily needing to be the center of the the, the cause or the, the question in the matter. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you very much, Yanni. It was thank really you. nice to uh, talk to you and very inspiring conversation. Thank you so, so thank much. Thank you again. <laughs> Pleasure was mine. <laughs>